Are you running low on drive space? Don't you hate it when you start a movie only to find out that the audio track is in the wrong language? How about getting the latest episode of your favorite show and finding that there are commercials still in it? Do you want to know how to resolve this on all of your media? Stick around and I'll show you how. In today's video, I'll show you how to set up and use Unmanic. Welcome back to the channel, where I share tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your media. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is to make sure we've got a share for our temporary transcoding. So I'm going to jump over to shares, go to add share, and I'm going to call this one Unmanic Cache. And for the comment section, I'm going to put in here temp share for Unmanic transcoding. For primary storage, I'm going to leave that on the array, but you can put it in your cache if you'd like. Everything else looks good for me, so let's hit Add Share. Once that's done, scroll down. Under SMB Security Settings, the Export option, set this to Yes. And then press Apply, and done. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card installed in your system, we're going to need the GPU ID for it. I don't have one installed in my demo server, but I do in my other one. So let's jump over to that server real quick, and I'll show you where to grab that information. All right, if you go to settings, and down at the bottom, you'll have NVIDIA driver. Click onto that. On the left-hand side, under NVIDIA info, the last green item down here is the GPU ID. We're going to need that in a moment, so go ahead and copy it and save it. Okay, back on our server on the apps tab. I'm going to go to the search box and type in Unmanic. Search for that, find it in the list, and press install. There you'll see an attention window come up, letting you know that if you have an NVIDIA driver, Intel, GPU, or a Radeon card, that you'll need to do additional settings. So go ahead and hit OK. All right, inside of the container, you'll find lots of different information. The first bit here talks about how to limit the CPU usage, limit RAM, what you need to do for NVIDIA, Intel, or AMD GPUs. We're gonna be following along on the NVIDIA use. Keep scrolling down. And the first thing we're going to need to do is check to make sure that port 888 is available. So I will do control F and then type in 888. Shows there's two. Scrolling all the way down, make sure there's none under the Docker allocations. Nothing is highlighted, so we are good to go there. The default for app data is fine. All right, for cache directory, that's the share that we had set up earlier. So let's drop down and select unmanic cache. Click off there. All right, library movies. We're going to need to browse to our movie folder, depending where you have that set up in your system. Mine is under media and then movies. The same for the TV shows, media and then TV. Music is going to be media and music. And library pictures is going to be once again, media and photos. All right, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card installed, what you're going to need to do is go back up to the top. And if you look in the advanced configurations here, you'll see NVIDIA GPU use. Step one, you have to install the NVIDIA driver plugin, which I already have. Step two, toggle this Docker container template to the advanced mode, which is at the top. Where it says basic up here in the top right, click on that and it'll change it to advanced. Finding our directions here, number three, in the extra parameters field, add dash dash runtime dash NVIDIA. So we will find that field down here, extra parameters, dash dash runtime equal NVIDIA. And then step number four, expand your template to show more settings at the very bottom down here, show more settings. And then it says that we need the GPU ID. Step five, in the NVIDIA visible devices variable, copy the GPU ID that you had found in the NVIDIA plugin. Since I copied that earlier, we'll scroll down to that item. It is right here. And we paste it in. And then you'd hit apply. If you don't have an NVIDIA card in here, just go ahead and leave that on all. We don't need the runtime equals NVIDIA. We'll change that back to the basic view and we'll hit apply. 
All right, while well, Unmanic is installing, let me know if you appreciate the video by subscribing. All right, that's done, so go ahead and click Done. Now we're going to jump over to the Docker tab, find the Unmanic icon, and the first thing I need to do is to turn on the auto start. All right, on the Unmanic icon, click on that and open Web UI. Go ahead and close the release notes. All right, now into setup. First thing that I'm going to do is set up for dark mode. So in the top right corner, I'm going to slide this little slider. Much better. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust my library. So I'm going to click on the hamburger menu in the top left and then go down to settings. By default, all the media libraries are in one folder. I like to have them separate so that I can apply different plugins. So let's change that. On the right hand side, you'll see a trash can, which is for deleting it. And then right next to it, you have configure. So we'll click onto that. The name here, I'm going to change this to movies. Library path, I'm going to click onto there and select movies and then close. And a couple sliders below here, I am going to turn on enable library scanner for this library and then enable monitor for this library. Then I'm going to hit close. Then under libraries, I'm going to click on the little plus to add a new library. And this one, I'm going to go back and click on TV and close. Once again, I'm going to edit this one. We're going to call this TV shows. The path is library slash TV, which is correct. I'm going to enable library scanner and enable library file monitor and close. All right, next I'm going to jump over to workers on the left hand side. Here we need to set up a worker group. So I'll click the little plus underneath worker group. And for group name, you can name it whatever you'd like. I'm just going to call this worker. I'll call it workers. So under worker count, there'll be some trial and error. You just going to have to play with it a little bit to see what workload your system can handle. I'm just going to leave it in the default for one and see how things go from there. Click the little arrow to close it. And now we've got one worker set up. Now if we go back in there and edit that, under worker event schedule, you can schedule it to turn on and off at different times of the day. So if you're going to be using your server throughout the day, then I'd schedule it so that this is turned off for the daytime and just let it run all night and then turn it back off in the morning. By clicking on repetition, you can choose daily, weekdays, Saturdays, Sundays, or each individual day of the week. Let's say during the week you're going to be gone all day. You could set every weekday. We'll leave it on midnight here. And the task is to start the worker. We have one worker, so we're going to say add event. So now at midnight every weekday, it's going to start processing. If we click the plus again to add another one, we can say every weekday at, oh, let's set a time here of, let's say 5 p.m., which is 1700. Then we're going to have it pause all workers at that event. And then on the weekends, we'll click add, say every Saturday and Sunday. Let's say we get up at, oh, let's go with eight in the morning. We will have it pause all workers at another event. And for weekday, Saturday, or weekend, Saturday and Sunday at midnight, we will have it start working again at event. So what we've scheduled here on the weekdays from 5 p.m. to midnight, it'll be turned off. But after midnight until 5 p.m. the next day, it'll run. And then for Saturdays and Sundays, it's going to turn on at midnight and then stop at 8 a.m. This is a demo server for me. There's no real data on it, so I'm just going to delete all those. But that's how you set those up. All right, next thing we're going to do is go over to plugins. And we're going to install a plugin from Repo. And in the top left, I'm going to search for 265. And if it doesn't show up for you, go ahead and hit refresh repositories. Depending on your setup, if you have a graphics card in your system and you want to utilize that to help process the video files, you would select the appropriate H.265 plugin for your video card. To find out which one you need, if you click on the little eye icon, which is the info icon, it'll show you more information about it. If you look over to the right hand side here, it says Intel. So this is for Intel graphics cards. The next one over, click on the little eye. That's for NVIDIA GPUs. So if you have an NVIDIA card, this is the one that you'd want to select. Let's go to the next one. This is for a CPU. If you've just got an integrated graphics card and it's nothing fancy, this is the option you'll want to choose. And then the last option here is for AMD cards. On this system, I don't have a graphics card, so I'm just going to do the CPU one. So find the one that you'd like, 
and then click on the little purple install icon. And we'll use this plugin to change the video encoding formats to H.265, so it'll really save on space on our system. If you go back up to the search and take out the 265, you'll see that there are a lot of other plugins available. And if you've followed my other videos, you know that I have Plex, Radar, and Sonar installed. And there are plugins for those, so let's find those. So we'll type in Plex first. There that is, so I'm going to hit install. That one's done, so we'll do Radar. There that is, we'll install that one. And Sonar. I'll install that one. One thing I did notice on my other system when I ran this is that sometimes the files after they were converted to H.265, they were actually larger than what it originally was, which luckily Unmanic has a plugin for that. And that is called reject file if larger than original. There it is. We're going to go ahead and install that. Another really annoying thing that I've ran across before is that sometimes the audio file is set to a different language than what I was looking for even though it's in there, but the default language, let's say it's, you know, Hungarian, and I wanted it to be English. So there's an option in here to change that. So look for reorder. That one is RE-order audio. There we go. Reorder audio streams by language. I'm going to install that. Another really annoying thing is having commercials that weren't stripped out of the TV shows when you got them. On Manix got a plugin for that too. So let's search for that one. That one is called skip commercials in TV show, Comskip. We'll click install for that one. And the last thing that I'm going to install is metrics for data panel. We'll click install there. And what this does is it keeps track of the file sizes. And after it's been processed, it'll show you the amount of data that it's saved. Those are the ones that I plan on installing for my system, but feel free to just clean out what you have in the search thing and just look through all these. There's all kinds of stuff. All right, once you've got your plugins installed, go ahead and close out of there. Back on the main plugins tab here, you'll see all the plugins that you've got installed now. So now we need to edit each plugin and set them up to our liking. We're going to need to add API keys, Plex tokens, set the language, that kind of stuff. So we'll just start on the top and work our way down. So file size metrics data panel. Over on the right hand side, you'll find global configuration. And there is none for that, so we'll just move down. Notify Plex. This will let Plex know when something's been updated. So we'll go over to global configuration. Then under the Plex URL, it's going to want the address for your Plex server. That'll be HTTP and then your server IP address. For me, it's 10.0.0.0.10 colon 32400, which is the default part. If yours is a different part, go ahead and set it accordingly. Then it's going to want your Plex token. And if you don't know where that is, let me show you real quick. Go back to your server. We'll open up Plex. Then go to any item on your library. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll find three little dots. Click on those, go all the way down to the bottom and click on get info. The bottom of the window that pops up, go to view XML. And then in the top, the address bar, all the way over to the right hand side. The last little bit here is going to say Plex token equal, and then it's going to have your token listed there. Highlight that, copy it, go back to Unmanic and paste that in in the Plex token field. Once done, go ahead and hit the close arrow, and that one's set up. Radar is next. Click on the global configuration, set your server location. In this case, once again, 10.0.0.10 for me, colon 7878, which I'm using the default parts and everything, so if yours is different, once again, set it to your settings. Now we're going to need the radar API key. We'll go back to our server, find radar. Go in there, log in, go down to settings, general, and right down at the bottom, you'll say API key, hit the copy option, go back to unmanic and paste that in under the API key for radar. Then under mode, you can tell it to trigger movie refresh on task complete, or you can have it import movie on task complete. I'm going to leave it and trigger movie. You can also have it trigger the radar file renaming if you'd like, and I'm going to enable that and exit out of there. Next, we have Sonar. Same exact process. The Sonar IP address, 10.0.0.10, colon 8989. Get the API key for Sonar. Go to the web UI. Log in. Settings. General. Copy the API key back to Unmanic. Paste it in. Going to have it refresh and rename and 
close out of that one. Next, we have reorder audio streams by language. Click on the edit icon. The default language is going to change it to is English, which is good for me. If you'd prefer a different language, just go ahead and put in the a three digit code for your language. I'm going to hit close now, go back. All right, next we have reject file size if file is larger than original. We'll go to the configuration on that one. And for the settings in this, you can either mark the task as failed or what I'm going to select is ignore files in future scan if end result is larger than source. And then close back out of that. Next, we have skip commercials and TV shows, com skip. We'll go to the editor for that one. And I'm going to enable remove detected commercials from the file. And I'll hit close to go back. Then video encoding. This is for my CPU to encode the files to H.265. The defaults are all good, so I'm just going to leave it that way and close back out. If you've chosen any other plugins on your system, just go ahead and set those up too. All right, the next thing we're going to do is go apply these plugins to our different libraries. So I'm going to go back to library, click on the configure icon for the movies. All right, go down to plugins and click the little plus to add plugins to this library. Then I'm going to look through my list here and anything that applies to that library, I'm going to go ahead and add it to it. Since Plex handles our movies, I'm going to add that one. Hit the plus again, movies radar handle, so we'll add that. Reorder audio streams, we will add that one. Reject file for larger than original, I'll add that. Sonar doesn't apply. There's no commercials in movies typically, so leave that. And the video encoding, I will add that one as well. Close that library out, and then I'm going to go over to TV shows. Configure that. Go to plugins. Once again, look through the list here. Plex, add that one. Sonar, audio streams. Reject if file is larger. Commercial skip and encoding. Oh, I forgot to add the file size metrics to the other movies library, so I'll go add that now. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go to the home icon in the top left. As you probably noticed in the bottom, it says, Unmanic has stopped all workers as it has detected a change to the plugin configuration. Whenever you change any kind of plugin, it's gonna stop the workers and this message will pop up. So to start them, we're gonna go up to options, in the top right corner and hit resume all workers. Next, we need to refresh the library scan in order for it to look through our libraries for any files that these plugins can be applied to. We simply press rescan library now and it'll start looking through our library. And as you can tell here, it's found two pending tasks so far. So now you'll see under pending tasks, it's found a bunch of files that need to be processed. And in the top under workers, it shows you the file that's currently being processed. This one here is Africa Screams, which is a movie from 1949. And it's going to take, according to this, about two hours and seven minutes for it to finish up. Or longer. It keeps going up. If you have your worker count set to one, as I do, and you see that this is going to take, let's say, two minutes, you could probably up that worker count so it can process more than one file at a time. Or if it's like mine, and it's going to take an hour and a half to complete, you could just leave it on one. This all depends on the processor in your system. And if you have a video card processing files too, it's really going to speed it up. I have an NVIDIA video card in my other server, and that one I have set to a lot higher number. So at this point, you just got to sit back and wait for it to do its job. Depending on your library size, this could take quite a bit of time. And that's where the scheduler really comes in handy. After a while, when you've had some files processed, over on the left-hand side, you'll find data panels. When you click on that, it'll show you the files that have been processed and the amount of space that it saved you. At the top, it'll show you the total file size changed. And on the bottom half, it'll have a list of the different files that have been processed. You can click on a file, and over on the right-hand side, it'll show you the individual file size change for that file. The first time I ran this on my system, it took a few days for it to process everything, but I was shocked at the amount of data that it saved me. It was a huge amount of space. So once yours is done processing, why don't you leave me a comment and let me know how much space Unmanic has saved you. I'd be really interested to find out. If you want to learn more about Jellyfin or Plex, check out one of these two videos right here. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.